Basically the bricks. killing the breeds. Hello. Sorry, hi. Just a little reminder. Um, for those of you who have taken some pictures during the conference, whether it was yesterday or this morning, uh, it would be great if you could make sure to upload them. Thank you. <laughs> it would be great if you could make sure to upload them on, you will see on your folder that you received yesterday, the second category, you have a line saying events photos. So you just need to scan the QR code and then you will be able to upload all your pictures. So yes, if you could just, uh, it takes a couple of seconds really. It's super simple and the idea is that we would like to feature all the pictures taken by, part by the participants in the um, DHS2 for Education conference portal that we will be sharing with you as well. Thank you. Hey everyone, welcome back from tea break and welcome back to everyone online. Um, we're just going to, I'd like to introduce you to Alfredo Muchanga. He is a senior lead developer for Sal Digitus, which is uh, his Mozambique. And uh, uh, interesting, when we heard from Sidi and from um, Peter earlier about the Eswatini and Gambia examples, Sidi mentioned that we came together as a community to respond to a need. So I'm really excited that Alfredo will be able to tell us a little bit about that journey and um, give us a bit more of a practical demo. Thanks, Alfredo. Thank you, Sophia. And hi, uh, everyone. So I'm now going to talk about SEMIS. Uh, during the last presentations, there is this term, uh, SEMIS, that was, was mentioned. So now I'm, I'm going to, to do a quick demo of this uh, module and 
it's going to be very quick because tomorrow, uh, from tomorrow, we'll be doing a deep uh, exercise and analysis and uh, checking how uh, these modules uh, so works. So th this is a joint work that was done by the uh, DGS2 for Education community uh, involving different uh, HISP teams, HISP Mozambique, HISP Uganda, HISP Sri Lanka, HISP WCA, and all uh, <coughs> technical uh, members that are part of this, of this group. So basically, uh, as was mentioned, uh, the need of having individual data is something that uh, drives to the implementation of individual uh, level software. So on the gs 2 side uh, was designed this uh, application that we call SEMIS. So SEMIS is an application that was designed to be used at school level and cover two main groups. So we have two main target groups. The first one is the students. So we want to do student enrollment. We want to take attendance and also we have staff. We also want to do staff enrollment. We want to check which teacher is present, which one is not present. We want to know how many teachers with X academic level we have uh, at our schools and other indicators that we, we, we want to, to, to perform. So that is something that is done using uh, an, an application that is based on two approaches. The first one is the web-based app that we can use uh, a, a navigator to access the application using internet and we can do, we can perform the actions. And then we have another version that is the Android-based version that works offline and is very useful, especially if you are dealing with uh, schools with low resource, with low connectivity, so we can opt in using mobile applications. In terms of modules, this is the uh, SEMIS homepage where we have two big uh, domains. The first one is the student domain and the other one is the staff domain. So for students, we can make enrollment, we can do student enrollment, we can enroll students, we can take daily attendance, we can uh, assign uh, performance v values, so during the academic year, the student can take various exams, so we can add the exams into the system using this module. We also can assign final result. So if uh, a student is enrolled in a, a specific ac academic year, at the end of the year, we expect to say if the student passed or failed. So we can do that using this uh, final result module and also uh, for some reasons, for various reasons, we can have some transfers for one school to another one. So all of these features we can perform using the SEMIS app. We also have on the staff side three modules. The staff registry, where we can register all our uh, teaching and non-teaching staff. We also can take attendance and uh, can at the same way do uh, the management of transfer, moving teachers for one school to another one, for one district to another one, we can do all of this using the uh, SEMIS app. <clears throat> when we go to the mobile side, uh, as I mentioned, it's a bit more flexible because we can work offline. We just need to have internet to do the first connection, and then later on, we can work offline and only sync when we have data. What we have on the Android side? Uh, we, right now, we have two modules, the attendance and performance module. So we can take, quickly take attendance, so the teacher can take attendance at school, uh, and also we can uh, enter the, the records for different uh, subjects that we have at school. So this is the quick overview of the, of the SEMIS, uh, and to work, we have some other complementary modules, uh, namely the school calendar, where we can define what are the school days at my school. So we know that, uh, from country to country, we can have different configurations. Uh, there are some countries that, uh, most of the countries they work from, uh, they have classes from Monday to Friday, but in some countries it can be different. So using this uh, solution, you have this flexibility to set 
the school days based on your own domain, based on your own country uh, experience. You also can set uh, the terms. You can define when start ter term one and when it's going to finish the term one. So based on that, uh, the system will block the non-school days and you can manage the, the, to do data entry in a proper way. <clears throat> we also have the configuration app that is basically to make sure that you, you do uh, uh, a proper configuration to the system based on, on the DGS2 uh, standards. Uh, we are going to have some dedicated sessions to talk about those two complementary modules. So now I will move to the demo and I will be doing a demo for the, uh, for, of the semis. <coughs> now I will log in as a school user. So I just entered my credentials and now I'm logged in as a school user. I go to the menu and then I select the application that I want to use. That is the semis app. So once again, this is a quick demonstration. It's not uh, easier to appreciate what's there. We're going to have another session where we're going to show it in a very quiet, quiet way. So basically, when I, I select the, uh, the option, in the menu, it will take me to this page. And here, I have the possibility to navigate uh, using these options here, the cards, or I can go to the left menu. So let's, uh, for instance, click on enrollment option. So I click on enrollment, and the system brings uh, me this page. So here, I have to apply the main filters. So when we want to list students in a certain school, I need, to, I need to know what is the school, I need to know what is the grade, and I need to know what is the class or session. So that is the basic thing. Like if I have a list of students anywhere at uh, education domain, I need to know what is the school, what is the grade, what is the class. Based on that, I can reach that specific student. So that's what we do when we come to the system. We select the school, we select the grade, and we select the class. So as you can see, I selected uh, this school, grade one, and, 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 and my class or section is A. So what can we do with this list? <clears throat> one of the most common action, actually the first action, is to enroll a new student. So to enroll a student, I just click here, uh, and the system will bring me this form. So this form, is a very flexible form that is configured based on the school paper-based forms. Most of the times, we have paper-based form, and we convert the, the forms to, to, to a digital uh, platform. So based on that configuration, we create the forms. So here, I select the academic here. I select uh, the grade. Actually, I can use a previous one. I select the grade. Uh, I say, what is the class? If I don't know, I just say not defined. Uh, and then I put here the values. Once again, I, I think I will repeat it a lot because I will not go very deep on the details because we're going to do it again tomorrow. So basically, I fill the, the, the details of the, the student. Uh, I have two sessions. I have the profile, where they can fill the student profile, uh, focus on the uh, demographic details, and I also have the socioeconomic details or uh, student registration details. So basically, uh, the form is divided into uh, points. I'm just filling here some, some, some data. And also, I can also include photo. So as, as, as you see, it is possible to, in the Gambian use case, uh, is, uh, they are producing student card. So you can uh, upload the photos to the system in order to produce the, the student cards. So on the socioeconomic details, uh, we have some specific question about the social uh, situation and economic situation of each student. So we have questions like there is electricity, uh, if he has electricity uh, in student house, and uh, if he's living with the parents or not, and other, and other questions. So when I'm done, I just uh, click on save, and I, I will be done with the creation of my, of my student. So my student is now created. So what else can I do? 
once I grade the student, so now I'm able to perform the day-to-day -day activities at school. The first thing that we do is to take attendance. So I just switch to, to this attendance module. And once I open, uh, you can see that we have this, this view. This is the attendance uh, history for this specific selection, for this school, this grade, and this class. So which options we do have here? We have this option here to view attendance records. So basically, the attendance is taken, and now I want to see what is the attendance situation for my students at my specific class. So if I want, for instance, to see attendance for the last week, I just select Friday, last week Friday, and I click OK, and the system will show me the, the status. And if you pay attention, you will see that we have one student, uh, Maria Paula, that missed uh, four days uh, uh, of, of, of class. So I can, I can see what's going on with this student. So I have this option to view reason of absence. When I click here, I can see that the student is sick. So this is the reason of absence. That's the reason why the student is not coming to school. The student is sick. And also, if you pay attention, uh, we have the, here the 1st of May, that is a public holiday. So if it's public holiday, there is no class. So the system will not allow me to take attendance uh, for public holidays, not even for Saturdays or, 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 or Sunday, if on my country it's not a school day. So how do I do to take a new attendance? Uh, I basically click here uh, on take attendance. I select the date. Let's say that I want to take attendance for today. I will just click OK, and I will mark, uh, sorry, I, I will just mark the, the, uh, the attendance values based on uh, the status of the student. So if the student is present, I, I, I just say uh, present. If the student is absent, I, I click here on the absent button, and then I say, what is the reason? So here we just put sick and other reason, but we can put the reasons that we want based on our own context. So let's say today uh, are present, except uh, uh, the first one that, that, that is not. So in this way, I'm done with the attendance for, for, for today. So you can see that when I do that, I'm going to have the, uh, my, attendance, my attendance status. The next one is the performance. So when we go to, to, to a specific academic year, there are some exams that we check. And in the system, we can choose what we want to collect. Based on our conditions, we can choose to collect only the annual average, for example, per subject. We can say that for us, we just want to know what was the final average for each student at the end of academic year? You can do that. But if you have more conditions, you can say, I want to know the average uh, for each student per term. Like at the end of each term, I want to know what is the average of, of each student. But if you have more condition, you can also go down and you say, every time that there is an evaluation, there is an exam, I want to record the values in the system. So you need to decide which approach you use. And it's based on your resource. It's based on very uh, other conditions that are related to the day-to-day -day activity. On this example, we are using the term approach. So every term, we take attendance. So let me just switch and view the marks for term one. So I click here on, on term one. The system will load the values for term one. As you can see, I already have my values. This is a 0 to 100 scale. So I have all my students with marks for term one. Uh, when I go to term two, uh, you can see that I have the same situation except for visual arts subject. So let's say that I want to take attendance for visual art, uh, arts subject. I just come here to this field and fill the, the values. Uh, as you can see, I'm just filling the, the values. Based on the student name, I can fill the values, and this is something very flexible, uh, and is very similar to what people is used to do using Excel file. So once you fill, you, you can see that the color changes, so it means that the value is saved in the system. 
So here, no matter what, what's going to happen with your computer, if it is stolen or if it's a fire, the data is already saved somewhere in the cloud and you can access it from other, other computers. So this is the uh, ter I mean performance module. After that, we have the transfer that is also one of the uh, features that we have in the system. Uh, as was mentioned here, we need to keep the list of students up to date. It means that if someone is taken from one school to another one, we need to have that uh, history registered in, in my system in order to understand what's happening. So uh, when I click on this uh, transfer module and I open, I have two main blocks. The first one is the outgoing transfer. So here I can see the students that moved from my school to another one. It's outgoing. They are going for, from my school to another one. And when I click here on incoming transfer, I can see those that are coming to my school. So for this particular school, I sent three students, but I didn't receive any student so far. So what is the process if I want to send a student? I just click here on this option, perform transfer. Uh, the system will load the, the student list. I will select which school I want to send, to we, and I want to send them from my school to which uh, school. So let's say that I want to send this one. I just click on, I select the student. I can select one or more, and then I click on execute transfer. I select the this, this, this school that I want to send to. I will send this student to this school. And I'm, uh, his move is changing school because he changed the residence. The father got a new job in a different district and he needs to move to that district. So I say change of residence and I will say perform uh, transfer. So this student uh, I started the process of moving students from my school to another one. And you can see here that the status is pending. So now I will log in using the Destiny School uh, credentials. I will just uh, switch for, for school one to school two in order to take an action about that request. So I come here, I go to the same application. Now I'm using a different uh, school account. Now I'm the one that is going to approve that uh, transfer. So I, I go to the same module that is transfer and then uh, I select incoming transfer. And if I select incoming transfer, you can see here this one, the Albion LBS, uh, the Alfred Mushanga student, he says two, two hours ago, but it's because of time zone. Actually, it's the one that I, 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 created, I created now. Actually, for me now, it's, it's still, you know, on my computer, you can see it's, it's seven something. So, yeah. Okay, so with this student, I have two options. Or I can say, okay, I accept you at my school. Or I can say, no, I cannot accept you for some specific reason. So in this case, I will just accept. I click yes, and then I confirm, and this, the student is accept at my school. And he can take his life normally, as happens to, 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 to others. So now, to finalize, I will go back to my, my original school. That is the, the school one. And I will show the last module on this semi, semis app. The, mo the, the, the last module is the final result module. On these uh, final result modules, we have two main actions to take. The first one is to assign final result. So at the end of, of the academic year, we need to say if the student was approved or not. So that is the first thing that we, we, we do. So I will have here the list of, of my students. This is the list of, of my students. I will uh, I, I would have final result for this one. So I will select one, two, three, four. And I say all of them 
they, they approved on this academic year. And they say approved. So the system will update uh, the values for them. Now we do it manually. But if you have enough data to do it automatically, you can also create some, something that we call program rules to assign those values automatically. So that's the first thing that we do. So at the end of academic year, we need to assign the final result. So let me assign uh, this one also, just to make sure that we have uh, a good look and feel. So all of them, we have 10 students here, two failed, and eight, they were, eight were promoted. So now, I have two uh, options. Or I can say that those students are done for me. They will not continue at my school in the next academic year. Or I can enroll them in, in the next academic year. So if I want to enroll the next academic year, I basically select the students that are here. And I say that they are going to be promoted to the, a different academic year. And now they are going to grade two. And I don't yet know the um, class that they will be. And I can say uh, uh, perform promotion. And you can see here, I have three promoted and zero not promoted. So we are going to see during the exercise when we have these uh, 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 situations where we cannot promote a student. And one of them is uh, if the student is already active in one academic year, we cannot promote to the same academic year. We need to move him to the, um, a different uh, academic year. So that's what we have in terms of, of, of uh, student uh, data management. Uh, but we also have uh, something very interesting that is more related with data quality. So if for some mistake we, we fail on data entry, we have this option to update the records. So we just click on this, on this pane and the system will bring all details and I can change whatever I want to, 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 to change. So I just change what I want to change and then I update. And also if for some reason I want to delete, I can also click here and the system will bring me this view. So this view is very important, especially for data integrity purpose. Like before you delete a student, the system will show you what are the records that we have in the system? For this one, I'm saying that he has 35 attendance values. And we also have marks for term one. He has marks for term two. Doesn't yet have marks for term three. But he has also uh, a preliminary final result. So now, with this information, you can decide if indeed, in fact, you want or not to delete this student. If you do, you just click on this button and then you say delete, and you are deleting the enrollment, and the student will not, be, uh, will not belong to your list uh, uh, anymore. Uh, something else that we can do is, is to search for, for, for student. So using this uh, search option, let me just copy uh, an ID here. Using this search option, I can come to, to the search uh, button and then search by ID. We have two IDs on this in, uh, particular implementation. Or we can also search by other details like name, surname, and other searchable items. So now I can search by ID. I just pass the ID here. This could be the PIN, the national ID, and something else. But I think it was clear that if you want to implement this kind of systems, we need to have a unique identifier. Depending on the country situation, we need to define which one will be, but we must have one unique identifier. So I just click here on the search, and then you can see that I have the result. So it says that there is someone with this ID called Maria Paula, and he has one enrollment in the system. If I want to see more details, I just click here, and they see, ah, okay, uh, in 2023, I uh, was enrolled at the Bar Barracuda LBS, grade one, uh, section A. So let, let's take someone that uh, has more than one enrollment. Uh, let's try this one, for instance. 
and I click on, on search. You can see that this one we have two enrollments. When I want to see more details, I just click here and I have where you are studying on 2022 and where is studying on, on 2023. Forget a bit about the data, it's a testing environment. So, <laughs> uh, but here we have a very important uh, note here that says that this student is enrolled for this academic year. Why is that important? Because when you search and you find a student that concluded the previous academic year, but is not yet enrolled in this academic year, you can do the enrollment without a permission of the previous school. So that's something flexible that each country can uh, configure to allow or don't allow that one. But if you want to make flexibility in the system, we can have this rule. This is very important, especially if you want to move from primary to secondary. So I can say that when I reach, let's say that primary, the last grade of primary six and secondary starts on grade seven. So I can say, if I want to move someone for grade six to seven, I can just search by ID, and if he doesn't have an active enrollment, I can just take him to my uh, new school. So that is something that came based on the different uh, use case, especially the Eswatini's one. So that's all for, for now in terms of the uh, website. Uh, just to, to, to highlight that we have also the, the staff part. This is the student. Everything that I show was about students. But we also have the staff where we can do the staff enrollment. Uh, we can do, we can take staff attendance. And for students, we just take the, uh, let me go back here. For student, we just take if he's present or absent. But for staff, we can, we can also say if uh, he's late or, or not. So I need to, to go to another school to show staff data. But to, to have to gain time, I will just now move to the Android uh, app. I will be very uh, quick on that. Uh, just a second. Okay, uh, so this is the Android version of the Semis. And as you can see, we use the same design. So the app is going to be familiar on web and also on Android. Right now, we have two options. We have the attendance and then we have the performance. So our focus on the mobile side was to day-to-day -day activities. So mostly we take attendance daily and occasionally we also are going to take performance. So of course, to come here, you need to filter by um, uh, academic year, by school, by grade, and by class. So after you're applying the filter, you are going to have the total number of students. On this case, I have nine students from grade 1A in Albion LBS. So if I want to take attendance, let's say I want to take attendance for today, I just click on attendance, and then I click this update and I say what is the status. So I start calling. I call the first one, I call the second, the third, and if all of them are present, that's fine. But if someone is absent, I just click on the absent button and I say he's sick and I say uh, it's done and I can continue. So when I'm done, I click on the save and the system will give me a summary. So it says that I have out of nine, my total number of students, I have eight present and one absent. And I can click on done, I can save. And you can see that the, I have now the attendance status. So I can navigate, if I want to go to a different date, I can just navigate uh, using the same logic, like without um, having a possibility to take attendance for weekends and for public holidays, for example. So I just switch to a different date so here we have the date, and you can see that the attendance status is different. <clears throat> uh, finally, 
I can also check the performance. Uh, the configuration is the same. And the good thing of the HS2 is uh, once you change the configuration, you, you had a new subject or you change something, you don't need to install the application again. You just have to do a synchronization and everything will be up to date. We just use one uh, centralized configuration. So if I want to take performance, I just click on performance. I will have this option to select the term. I can select term one, term two, or term three. And then I select the subject. So I can say I want to take attendance for English, for example. And then here I will, I will put the, the marks for each, for each of, the, of the students. So I can do that for, for, for English. I can do that for math, for science, and for the other subjects that, that I, have, I have here. So basically, that is the uh, demo, of the, a quick demo of the, of the semis. And thank you for your attention. Thanks so much, Alfredo, and this is just a taster of what's coming for those who are staying for the Academy um, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday.